Hey everyone, Julian here today. I'm going to show you how to make liquid drum and bass. I've learned a lot of new stuff for the style and how to get it really nice and clean. I'm going to be showing it to you guys today. As usual, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything you just heard in the intro. It's available at the top of the description on my website for just $5. Definitely go grab that, guys. It's a really, really great template. Again, not a lot of great drum and bass templates like this on the market. There's a lot of crap, but this is something really great that you can get that will take your tracks to the next level today. You know, I wish there was something like this back when I was discovering all this liquid German bass back in the day. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. Enjoy, and let's dive in. Alright, so we're at 172 BPM. You know, kind of like a nice techie German bass tempo. And we start with this first pad. Now, this is really simple. So if you look at this musically, we're in the key of F sharp minor. So we're going minor third, ninth, minor third, fifth, right? But it just sits, if you play this with the chord progression, see it creates this great really sparse pad and this is what a lot of the pads are doing in these tracks is like it's not always just meant to just be this long held out chord progression a lot of times it's like a few of these little things like this coming together and that's really how you create like beautiful liquid drum and bass it's not you know you want like this pad is just like a little part of it for the actual sound, it's made with wavetable. It's this FM harmonics plus a little bit of a triangle wave. And then we have a low pass filter, which I'm automating too. So that's kind of like working together with the notes, right? And then if you look in here, there's a bit of an LFO on the oscillator one position. So you're getting that like kind of slow movement. We have a bit of unison and then some reverb and that's it. Then we have the second pad. So this is almost like these like classic jungle style drum and bass chords, right? Now the key to these, so again, we're in the key of F sharp minor. And if you look at this, we're literally doing like the one chord basically. And then the fourth and just kind of like what we're using is we're using, it's this thing where you go, okay, root note, minor third, fifth, right? That would be like a basic F sharp minor chord. And then you add in that fourth and these three voices together give you that super jazzy kind of feel right and then up here we're just using another root note and then over here this is a b minor but it still is like the fourth here where we're doing this would be root note minor third fifth and then fourth right so it's very simple but it gives you that like kind of deeper german bass pad and again you add that with the other one you notice they're not really playing at the same times And you see, it's a really good, it's like a case of everything working together. Now, for this sound, it's made with Wavetable. Wavetable is great for pads because if you've ever tried to make pads with like saw waves and square waves and triangle waves before, you know it gets kind of to be the same thing over and over after a certain point. But with this, you can get all these different textures. So I'm using this like formant Wavetable, this ah -oo -oo, and then this uh, sine wave here. And then we've got just a little LFO on the oscillator one position. And that's the other thing too. There's, it's so easy to get cool textures. Like all you have to do is really just get a cool wavetable and move it around with like a wave, an LFO or an envelope. And you can make really exciting pads. And then we have a bunch of unison, phase sync, a bit of chorus, a tiny bit of erosion. Here's with that. With, it just gives a little bit more of that like in the high end, right? We got a bit of reverb. And then a high pass, because if we turn this off, that would definitely start to clash with some of the other stuff. Like, when you have all this happening with your bass, you really don't want this to have much low end or even low mids. Maybe in the break when the bass isn't playing. Then we have this piano, sort of like the last melodic thing. 
So this is something that's done a lot, which is kind of just writing like a droning melody like this, you know, using the scale. Again, we're in the key of F sharp minor. So if you look at this here, it's a very simple, you know, it's only five notes. It's literally just root note, ninth, minor, third, which as you can see are very close together. Not really that fancy. Fourth and then fifth. Right, it's really simple, and it's actually kind of playing on like, like how close those are, right? And it's like this droning melody, and just like with the other ones, if you play something really simple but in key like this over the progression, it'll fit really well. So for the actual sound on this, it's made using this like piano sample. And this is actually a really good way to get cooler textures too. Like that's what this is all about. I'm really trying to show you guys like how to not just use like basic saw wave and square wave leads, but really get like, and even not just basic pianos, but like how to take a piano and get something more creative out of it, right? Like taking this and you get such an interesting sound when you just have it like in audio like that, especially when you go to like a low note. And you can really play around with that. You can even warp it. You know, just anything that'll sound good, really just play around with it. But then that's going through a bit of reverb, high pass. And then this is another German bass trick, which will be having this like volume shaping. So this is a half note. So it's going like. And over the drum and bass drums. That goes really nicely. So then we have these vocals. So I think the thing with these is just how simple they are. It's just these simple little vocal stabs, just right, very basic. But that's why they work so well. You just take something very basic like that, get it in key, right? These are both pitched to fit. And then again, if you have that solid progression, they'll fit well. This is just going through a bit of reverb and a high pass. Then we have the bass line. So this is the chord progression. So this is kind of like doing a lot of movement. But this is something I noticed with these bass lines is that, you know, you can't just have like a long held out note. You really, because keep in mind, like the melodic stuff isn't really doing that much movement, right? It's meant to be pretty static like that. So you need something that's going to groove with those drums, right? And that's why we do all this, and particularly these like eighth note movements. Like it's almost like a trap pattern, honestly. Like don 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 don. Like that would be a very similar to like a trap 808 in a lot of cases, but it just goes really nicely. And it's also the call and response, right? So here we're going root note fourth, sixth fifth and then sixth and then here we're going fourth fifth sixth seventh root note like we're walking back up but it's that down 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 and then don't no no right so then for the sound this is made with wavetable we've got a sub oscillator we have this sweep which is basically like a saw wave with some crazy stuff like morphing happening to it and we also have a saw wave here which is an octave up and detuned a bunch if we take out the saw wave see that kind of having that octave up kind of adds some like definition and helps you to hear it a bit more We've got a low pass filter with a bunch of automation. So again, using the automation together with the notes, like as this is going up, the filter's building. And that's part of what makes that feel so epic. But then we're also doing, so you can see we have an envelope on the filter frequency. We have this LFO on the filter frequency. We kind of have like two LFOs actually. And then what's happening is you can see we're doing this like 
It's the movement of the automation, but then there's also a like that with the LFO. Like if I turn off this whole thing, see what I mean? So it's kind of like using the notes together with that LFO going creates like a cool rhythm. We got a bunch of unison. Then we have this amp. Here's without it. With it. You can see it's just at 13%, but it really brings out the mids and gives it some definition. We're cutting the like deep, deep lows at 28 hertz. You know, the stuff that you couldn't really hear that would mess up your mastering. We have a utility converting the bass to mono. And then one more amp at the end. Here's without. With. So that just kind of ties the whole thing together. That's at 52%. And then we have the drums. See, a lot of people ask about how to make German bass drums, and I think there's a lot of guides out there where they talk about it, but they don't really actually like show it in a track. Like This is the amount of elements you can have and still fit it into a whole track like this. You know, without it being like overdone, but also without it being underdone. So we always start with the kick and snare. Like the whole groove really sits around these. Like when you start a track, I always start with the kick and the snare and the bass. Right? And you can see we just have a nice big fat kick and snare. There's actually no processing because it's really just like finding good samples. I'd say the main thing here is you notice the kick isn't actually that long. And the snare is like volume wise, it's like just enough to where it's not too loud and it's not overpowering the kick, but they groove well. Like a lot of people are, are concerned with, oh, what's the perfect kick and snare compression and saturation settings and all this. Honestly, man, like really just get the levels right and build everything else around that. So then the next thing would be a bit of a breakbeat. Right, like once you have the foundation, you can bring this in. And you can see this sits with that. It's just being high passed a bit. And it kind of adds to the snare a bit and it gives it some groove. I also added a shaker or like a tambourine over that. This is from my ultimate drums pack. Just to fill out the highs as well as this little like hi-hat. You can see those two kind of just like fit together. We also have this ride. It's going like Which gives a really nice background kind of rhythm. So you start with those kind of like those main percussion layers once you have the kick and snare. Get this grooving. And then we add in a few little background layers. So this is one where I took like from a breakbeat that and I just added it in there. And it really fills that out well with the other one. Right? And this is a good technique. Like a lot of times back in the day when I was trying to make these types of tracks, because I used to want to be a drum and bass producer, I would try to get like from my like that. I would try to get two different percussions and put them together and then it wouldn't really work. Don't do that. <laughs> just get, just do like this. Get a break beat that has it. Like this is like a classic jungle break. Right? And just take the tch and put that in because that's going to groove better already because it's like kind of made to fit together. And then we also have this. So this was actually, I took this break beat and I reversed it and I took the snare and yeah, I just have it like on like the half note there. So if we play that with the kick and snare, you know, it just adds a bit more movement, a bit more groove to the drums with some reverb and a high pass filter, nice like spaced out.
one of those tiny details that makes the whole thing work. And yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full template at the top of the description on my website. The link is right there. You get the samples, MIDI, presets, and the full project file. Everything you need to make the best drum and bass track. Like I said, guys, I wish this existed when I was discovering this stuff back in the day. You know, this is really just about providing you guys with the ultimate templates so we can all level up and make the best music of our lives. Thank you so much for the support, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.